Welcome to In Focus, where we go one-on-one -on -one with the Republican field of presidential candidates. I'm Tara Wall, your host. He's the 55th governor of Louisiana, former vice chair of the Republican Governors Association and Rhodes Scholar with a master's from Oxford. Here's a look at why Bobby Jindal says he wants your nomination and a few things you probably didn't know. And joining me for this edition of In Focus is Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal. Governor Jindal, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to jump right into this, as we usually do with these interviews. Um, first of all, you say on your website you refer to yourself as an outspoken voice for integrity and conservatism. Tell us how that relates to why exactly you want to be president. Well, look, I've got the backbone, the bandwidth, the experience to get this job done. I know we've got a lot of people running. I don't have a famous last name. My dad wasn't president. I don't have a reality TV show. What I do have is a proven track record. We've got a lot of great talkers running for president. I'm a doer, not a talker. So, for example, every candidate says they're going to shrink the size of the government. I'm the only one that has already done that. We've reduced the size of our government 26%. None of the other governors has done that. None of the senators has done that. If they haven't reduced government yet, what makes us think they'll do it in D.C.? The reality is if we, don't, if we don't reduce the size of the government economy, we can't grow the American economy. We've been the most pro-life state six years in a row in my state. We've enacted the toughest Second Amendment rights as well as religious liberty protections in my state as well. And we've grown the real world economy, top 10 state for job creation. So at the end of the day, I've got the backbone, I've got the, back, the bandwidth and the experience to do this. The next president will be sitting across from an Ayatollah or a Putin. We better hope he doesn't need a teleprompter to get the job done. All right. Well, you list uh, four, you know, key issues you outline on your website, health care, education, defense and energy. What would you say uh, among these or maybe outside of these is the biggest issue right now that is actually facing our country? I think the most important issue facing us is that the idea of America is slipping away in front of us. We've seen more damage done under President Obama these last seven years than we thought possible. Eighteen trillion dollars of debt a Planned Parenthood that is selling baby organs across the country. We see a president who refuses to stand with Israel, has declared war on trans fats and a truce with Iran. A Supreme Court thinks that it's smarter than God when it comes to defining marriage. We've got the left trying to take God out of the public square, a government creating a new entitlement program when we can't afford the government we've got today. The list goes on and on. They're trying to redefine the American dream to be the European nightmare, where instead of freedom and opportunity. It's all about having the government take care of you. It's all about redistribution, more government spending and borrowing. The idea of America is slipping away. I think the most important issue is we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to apply our conservative principles and rescue the idea of America. We better not let these fools in D.C. give away the idea of America. We better not let it slip away. We better do everything we can to fight to save the idea of America. The left is gift wrapping this election for us. They're nominating their worst candidate who's running the worst campaign. Hillary Clinton is a very, very flawed candidate. We'd better not waste this opportunity to apply our conservative principles. As long as I've got breath, I will fight to save the idea of America. Speaking of those conservative principles, like I said, you've touted them. And I know that many of the candidates you included are out there hoping the voters get to learn more about them. Uh, what would you say, uh, how would you define for them why and how you personally became a Republican? You know, I'm a lifelong Republican. I'll share with you a, a quick story. I was actually went to a very liberal university, went to Brown University in Rhode Island, got there during a presidential election year, wanted to join the college Republicans, went to the activity center, and there were no Republicans. They said, we don't have Republicans here. We don't have college Republicans here. They had a college Democratic chapter, and they said, they're the conservatives. The liberals are actually more radical than that. So we started the college Republicans chapter. We grew it. Eventually, we outnumbered the college Democrats. We still were a minority on campus, but we just enrolled every Republican we could find. I eventually became the chairman of the college Republicans in the state of Rhode Island. But what I learned there was that a couple of things. One, the importance of standing up for our beliefs, whether it was politically correct or not. But secondly, Look, I came of age at a time when Ronald Reagan was president, at a time when we were fighting not only to win the Cold War, but we were fighting to, to President Reagan was fighting to make America great again. He was fighting, folks remember, he, he proudly said in his reelect that it was morning in America again. Being a Republican meant we were for more freedom. We, were for, we believed in American exceptionalism. We believed in a strong uh, American military. It meant that we believed the government wasn't the answer to all of our problems. And so, I've always believed in those conservative principles. I saw my parents work hard so that my brother and I could chase the American dream. I knew the answer wasn't more government spending. So for me, it started at a young age. 
even going back to my college days. So it sounds like those principles are what drew you to the party, essentially. Absolutely. You mentioned Reagan. Um, there may be others uh, that uh, help prepare you for this next question, and that is who uh, impacted you in your professional life? Who had the greatest influence on you in your professional I'd to, life? I'd have to say my dad. He's one of nine kids. Literally grew up without, in a house without electricity, without running water. He was the only one that got past the fifth grade. Now, I know because wow. we've heard these stories every single day growing up. But here's the amazing thing. So almost 45 years ago, the first time that he ever got on a plane, he came with my mom halfway across the world to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. She was pregnant with me. They left behind their parents, their siblings. They didn't know anybody in America. They never visited America. They didn't know anybody who had been to Louisiana and could go back and tell them what it was like. And they came anyway, and they were coming to chase the American dream. They were coming to an idea as much as they were coming to a place, the idea of freedom and opportunity. What I love is when they land in Baton Rouge, she goes to school at LSU, he wants to get a job, doesn't know anybody, so he starts calling companies out of the yellow pages. And that's literally how he got his first job. He convinced a guy at a railroad company to hire him sight unseen. The guy told him he could start work Monday morning. So my dad's always been my role model, my hero. Just, I think his life is a great example of somebody who came here to chase, to catch, to live the American dream. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to come from a famous family, famous last name, or a wealthy zip code to do great things in this country. If you're willing to work hard, there's no limit on what you can accomplish. Uh, and finally, tell me something that people don't know about Governor Bobby Jindal, or Bobby Jindal, period. <laughs> well, one of the things people may not realize, my wife and I, Sabrina and I are blessed. We have three great children. Our third child was actually born at home. Slade was born nine years ago, not on purpose. We didn't plan this. Now, the first child took 36 hours of labor. The second child took 24 hours of labor. The third child took 30 minutes of labor. And we were literally at the house in the middle of the night, and the ambulance didn't have a chance to get there. We certainly didn't have a chance to get to the hospital. So it was literally my wife and me alone on the, the bathroom floor. And the funny thing was people came up to me afterwards and were saying, oh, you know, and congratulating me. I said, look, all I had to do was catch the baby. My poor wife is the one that did all the hard work. And afterwards, I tell you one of the most amazing moments. We've had, you know, we'd had two births before, but in the middle of all of her pain and distress, when I handed uh, my wife our, our child and she held Slade for the first time, she completely forgot about her pain. She completely forgot about her discomfort being on the floor in her nightclothes. And when she held our baby for the first time, just that mother's love for her child, I fell in love with my wife all over again. I tell people, such an amazing, amazing moment. Now, again, it wasn't planned, and my wife makes it very clear, if given the choice, she liked it better with the drugs and without the drugs. Yeah. But it was, uh, it was an amazing, amazing, and we were, we were blessed. It was an amazing experience. We were blessed. He was born very healthy. No issues, no complications. Well, that is a very interesting story. I don't think anyone, <laughs> any other candidate has a, quite a story like that. So uh, I think that's going to do it for us. And again, we just wanted to thank you uh, for joining us for this edition and wish, wish you lots of luck out there on the campaign trail, Governor. Thank you for having me. Governor Bobby Gentle, thank you. I'm Tara Wall. Thank you for watching In Focus. You can check out the series at GOP.com.